Welcome back this week, guys. I'm Gaston Rosato. This is season eight, episode seven. Today I'm solo as Renzo is out of town. And today is a very simple episode. We're going to kind of just recap a little bit on the Amelia Island weekend. Of course, Amelia Island being perhaps, well, definitely number one East Coast Concord and number two in the country and certainly top three in the world. So a very significant event. A very important event to be around and always, of course, very fortunate to uh, be able to participate, not only being there physically, but also uh, involving ourselves in, with cars, taking cars and buying some cars there in the auction. So let's go into the episode. Let's dig in and let's recap. <music> Guys, just got checked into the room. We're gonna go ahead and uh, meet the truck driver. We're dropping off the La Ferrari and Sergio. Let's go meet the driver. Let's go. Cars made it safely. So the Amelia Island Concours, you know, every year just continues to take on more and more prestige. And this year was very special, and people were looking forward to it not only because we're kind of coming out of this COVID, but also because Haggerty has purchased the Amelia Island Concours. So everyone was kind of, you know, anticipating new changes and kind of wondering what would be new. And, uh, and you know, and there was some of that feel in the air and there was a couple of new aspects of the event that I think make it, it overall a better experience, right? So a few weeks before the Concours, uh, I get a call from Chris uh, Brewer, who is the PR director for the Amelia Island Concours, and he, a couple of years ago, said we need to do something to this Concours to attract a younger crowd, to get new enthusiasts involved, because traditionally concourses, you have to qualify with a car that's a 1975 or older, so it naturally draws an older crowd also. Chris Brewer wants to get the supercars involved. He calls me again a few years ago. We take a 1,500 mile Testarossa that we've talked about plenty on this channel. It was the first ever, and there was only a couple cars, a couple people involved, and it wasn't even on the main show. It was on a parallel golf course. So it didn't get all the exposure it needed, but he needed to begin to introduce this, this new class to the Concours so that the, the board of the Amelia Island could ultimately integrate this to the main show. This was the fourth year of the Supercar class, and it was a very special year, in fact, because there was over a dozen cars on the field. It was on the main field. There were cars were being judged and awarded just like the main car shows, the main show cars, rather. The Supercar class was broken down in different classes. So we had 80s, 90s, and 2000s. And it was a strong, strong field, a lot of participants, a lot of, you know, very uh, familiar faces and new ones as well. Uh, and we were, again, so fortunate to be there with two very, very special cars representing essentially the last class, which was the, the 2010s era cars. Of course, we were there with the Ferrari Sergio, which, again, we've talked about many times on this channel. You can look back on that and the 2015 La Ferrari. Two cars that uh, we managed, two cars that we sold earlier last year. So because the main uh, judging for the supercar class took place on Saturday, which is also the same day of the car, they call it the Cars and Caffeine, which is more like a Cars and Coffee kind of feel. The field of the Ritz-Carlton Golf Course was full of cars, hundreds of cars. And that's also the day that the flagship auction takes place at the Ritz, which is the RM Sotheby's auction. Now, we found ourselves with a little bit of conflict because at 11 o'clock in the morning, the auction started and there was a car that we had to go look at and potentially buy. Judging for the supercar class took place at 10 o'clock. So we thought we had enough time, that one hour, to get it all done. Well, it was 10.45 and the judges still hadn't showed up to the car. I was finally able to spot out who they were. I walked up to them and I told them, hey, listen, we have a situation here. 
Auction starts at 11. I need to buy a car. It's actually the third car in the line, so I don't have a lot of time. Can we judge the cars now so I can go do that quickly? So they were very accommodating, of course. They judged the cars. We gave them all the information we could, and um, it was already 11 o'clock. So Renzo and I had to run to the other end. Which, I mean, you got to literally cross the entire golf course into the Ritz-Carlton, back into the auction. I sat down, short of breath. Auction starts. Two or three, four lots go by. The car finally shows up. Last chance, $280,000. Sold $270,000 jigs later. And we buy the car. A beautiful 1958 XK. 150 Roadster, fully, fully restored in 2021, nut and bolt, I mean, all out restoration, you know, finishing this beautiful dark blue over tan. I mean, it was, it was an amazing, amazing car. But they also said the awards for the supercars would be given sometime around 1130. So now we were around that time also. So I walk out of the lobby cross the golf course again, and as I'm walking through the main entrance of the show field, I hear the loudspeakers, they call, if your car, supercar owners, if your car has a ribbon, please proceed to the stage for the award. And uh, at that point, I had to run across the field to the cars to see if there was an award. Thankfully, and to my surprise, there was a, a ribbon on the Sergio the course at this point, you're not sure what that means, but you know you're going to be awarded something. Uh, we go to the stage, they start calling out all the, the, the names of the winners, and the Sergio wins a best in class. You know, we, we, were, we were very humbled at that point to say, wow, not only are we lucky enough to be here, we're lucky enough to be here with this car, and now we're lucky to be here with this car that won a best in class at one of the most prestigious concourses literally in the world, right? So it was a back and forth, back and forth, but you know what? Around 11, 30, 12, all this was wrapped up and we were able to enjoy the rest of the day. And essentially the rest of the weekend, uh, we had an absolute blast. We did tons of networking. And we did, in addition to the Concours, I'm going to kind of backtrack now, going back to Friday, we did the first annual Supercar Celebration Tour. All right, getting ready for the first ever Supercar Celebration Tour. We're going to visit an elementary school, a middle school, and a high school, and pay the kids a nice surprise. Join us. It was a gathering of about a dozen supercars and we drove to a local school where it's elementary middle and high school we parked the cars along the field and all the children came out to appreciate the cars and all the owners were there to talk about the cars with the kids and they all took pictures and they weren't expecting it what they actually did was they pulled the fire drill all the kids came out and they found themselves with the cars so it was a very very nice surprise and that's probably the most rewarding of all this, right? Because the inspiration that you can potentially provide to these kids, you never know the, the long-lasting effects of, of such a little small, I guess, detail in our lives that can, can, can ripple through their lives, right? So that was a blast. And, uh, you know, I got to say, Amelia Island weekend is perhaps one of my top favorite weekends. Uh, we have it so close by here. It's in North Florida. And uh, it's the who's who in the car world. The who's who's of the cars are there. They fly in from all over the world. And you have auctions and you have tours and you have shows and you have cars and coffees and you have, um, you know, just so many things going on. I just want to give a special thanks to, to a couple people and entities that were involved and in just helping us get through that weekend. First of all, Made Motors for Transportation. Impeccable service, impeccable trailer, impeccable timing. Haggerty, of course, for the invitation and the hospitality. They hooked us up with some VIP suites at the Concour. And Chris Brewer, because, you know, he was, I was luckily one of the first people he reached out to about four years ago with this vision of the supercar class. And, you know, being able to contribute and continue to contribute is, is you know, 
everything to us. So thank you, Chris. Let us know if you want to see that Jaguar in the future episode. I want to thank you all for watching. Please hit that subscribe button, like button. If you have any questions, comment down below. We'll see you next week. I'm Gaston Rosado.